You may like any video on this channel, but the day that you like this video, you will surely die. Within a thousand years. Hey, before I was born again, I famously presented a challenge to non-Christians that I like to refer to as Lewis's Trilemma for the Trinitarian Son of God. It essentially states that after reading the Bible, and specifically the four gospel accounts of the life of Jesus, the reader is left with a choice to determine whether Jesus is liar, lunatic, or Lord. Well, it didn't take long for people to realize that my clever argument was actually a false trilemma. By rejecting all three choices and accepting a fourth option, none of the above. Not to say that Jesus had actually lied himself, but others had lied about him. And a legend was born. Now, I present to you a fifth option, that if true has dire consequences for you, and every Abrahamic faith in the world. In fact, all of reality as we know it, it is all of the above. Jesus is a liar and a lunatic and a lord. I reject <coughs> your assertion, sir. Look, everybody, it's our friend Circular Apologetics. How are you today? Infinitely better than you. I still don't know why you haven't come to the logical conclusion to kill yourself yet. It's nice to see you too. Have you come to defend the faith? Yes, it's only logical that the all-powerful and all-knowing God needs me to stand up for him. Makes sense. You have objections to the all-of-the-above conclusion? It's absurd. You can't correctly read the Bible and come to the all-of-the-above conclusion. Everybody reads the Bible differently. It's kind of the point of the challenge to read it for yourself and make a decision based on your subjective reading comprehension and existing belief system. No! You need to pray for the Holy Ghost to help you interpret the Bible correctly. It doesn't make sense to exercise faith in a belief that you haven't made a decision on yet. Besides, it's my understanding that one doesn't receive the Holy Ghost until after they have decided that Jesus is Lord. So one should expect no supernatural guidance in making this decision. If he is a liar, he could be lying about being the Lord, thereby not being the Lord and a liar, or all of the above. I would argue that there has been many lords, or people in authority, who have been both liars and lunatics. A lord is a lord whether he truthfully inherits a kingdom or cunningly manipulates others to submit to him. The themes of insurrection, exalting oneself, or resurrection, the exaltation by others, has been prominently displayed upon the world stage in the last couple years. This seems especially relevant with certain allegations of lying, cheating, stealing, and fake news that has caused much division over the 2020 U.S. presidential election. There's your problem. Jesus is not just a Lord. He is THE Lord of Lords, capital L, Son of God who is God Himself. His very nature of omnibenevolence prevents Him from lying, and His omniscient nature prevents Him from suffering delusions. You need to adjust your chart because it's inaccurate. Again, the decision hasn't been made, so the reader hasn't come to the conclusion whether if Jesus is Lord of Lords or God in the flesh. I will adjust the chart, but it must be distributed uniformly to grasp the gravity of the dilemma which is going to be presented. Oh, God, no! The name of all of the above is Lucifer. And the question that no Christian can honestly answer is this. Is all of the above possible with 
God. Before you answer, remember that once upon a time, God allowed a Nakash, a shiny brazen serpent, that he had created to be craftier than any animal, free access to roam the garden and deceive humanity with the lie that they would live forever. Later, after complaining about the deplorable conditions that the Lord had led his children into in the wilderness, God sent venomous snakes to attack and kill them. As they cried out for mercy, God commanded Moses to exalt a graven image of the bronze serpent to heal them from the wounds which he had inflicted. Then finally, generations after the events in the wilderness, the people of Israel began to idolize their savior, the bronze serpent, or BS for short. When the good king Hezekiah, the greatest king Israel had ever known, saw fit to destroy the bronze serpent because the Israelites had placed it in direct competition with the worship of the one true God of Israel. Jesus compares himself to this graven image idol, and if the bronze serpent typology is taken in the proper context, Hezekiah did well to destroy it when the people elevated it to a place equal to God's, hence the Trinity. The Gospel of John states that the devil was a murderer from the beginning. But strangely enough, if you are a Berean and search the scriptures diligently, you will never find a confirmed kill attributed to Satan himself, except for the strange case of the murder of Job's ten children in the book of Job. Now, the book of Job is actually believed to be by many scholars the oldest book in the Bible, and if structured in chronological order would be the beginning of the scriptures. Here is where Christians will have a major problem when trying to attribute the murders of the beginning of scriptures to the being they think of as Satan. Allegorically speaking, if the glove doesn't fit, they must acquit. In a test of Job's loyalty, Job's children were killed when a mighty wind came out of the desert, collapsed the house they were in, and crushed them all to death. If you ask any Christian who alone has power over the winds and the waves, they will tell you it's either Jesus Christ or the Father himself. This is the equivalent of a Norseman telling you that Loki committed a murder with Thor's hammer Mjolnir, which he is completely incapable of wielding. So this means that somebody's lying about the supernatural murder of Job's children, or Jesus just isn't who you think he is. So to summarize the case against Christ, we have motive in the case of Job that God is willing to test the loyalty of his subjects, which would include the children of Israel in the first century surrounding the life of Jesus. We have precedent in the case of the bronze serpent which God exalted, knowing that it would become an idol that would be in direct conflict with his worship. But most importantly, we have evidence of a murder weapon that has Jesus' fingerprints all over it, placing him at the scene of the crime in the first supernatural murder in all of recorded scriptures. So again I ask, is all of the above possible with God? This question is at the heart of the unpardonable sin when the Pharisees are accusing Jesus of casting out demons in the name of an evil spirit, and is especially relevant to you if you can trust your Lord and Savior. So recall the verse at the intro of this video, and if you do believe the inerrancy of scriptures, here's Braxton Hunter with the definitely not idolatrous Trinity Radio to make you an offer you can't refuse. Let's finish with a pretty common one. If you found out today to your satisfaction that Christianity were true, would you accept God's authority, repent of your sins, and trust Jesus as your king? So if a YouTube channel tends to cause deconversions, then it promotes negative infinite utility. If I knew my YouTube channel tended to cause people to be tortured for thousands of years, I would delete it right away. Thus, if a channel tends to cause deconversions, it should be wiped off the internet as soon as possible.